Every day, we use online services that are apparently free. But what is the real price of such freedom? Most of the companies providing free online services tend to collect and store the maximum amount of personal data of their users. They use it to conceive various advertising business models or even sell it. Because data is profit. We also leave a trail of information as privacy configurations in our computers, browsers and cloud accounts will determine how much personal data will end up left behind. In fact, we are increasingly less free to interact online without being followed. We must recognize that privacy doesn't concern only those who have something to hide. We all have something we'd rather keep private. Imagine health insurance companies using your personal data to determine your annual policy rate, or real estate agencies quoting different commission rates for different customer profiles. They don't have to know your income figures, your photos, online browsing trails, and brand preferences tell a lot about who you are. People should have the right to decide which personal information they would like to share, how it is being used, in which occasions and for what means, and also be able to access and change it if they wish. From bad to worse, governments now have a cheap and efficient surveillance tool, as all the data they may need is already collected and stored by such companies. This is happening worldwide not only in non-democratic countries. While there is a need to combat criminal activities in and outside the web, there is a real concern that methods used to find criminals may be used to target human rights defenders, suppress dissenting voices and withhold inconvenient information from making headlines. In an era where data storage is easy and cheap and where sharing and following have different meanings. Who is following you?